Good morning. It is Friday, December 31st, 2021, last day of the old civil year and New Year's Eve, Friday in the octave of Christmas. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book with some bits of 1662. We're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We've left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Unto us a child is born. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Creator, the Maker of all things, the Mighty God, uh, the Savior, is none other than this child in a manger, the infinite um, revealed within the finite, and God in man. On the 30th, 31st day of the month, we repeat the Psalms for the 30th day. So we're on page 519, Psalms 144, 145, 146. Psalm 144 of a composite psalm 
You'll recognize phrases from other psalms. It's a prayer for the king's victory, a care for the victory of Christ, and for the blessings that flow through his victory and salvation to his people gathered in faith in the church. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my hope and my fortress, my castle and deliverer, my defender in whom I trust, who subdueth my people that is under me. Of course, that's the voice of Christ himself speaking by the psalmist. Lord, what is man that thou hast such respect unto him, or the son of man that thou so regardest him? Man is like a thing of naught. His time passeth away like a shadow. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth thy lightning, and tear them. Shoot out thine arrows, and consume them. Send down thine hand from above. Deliver me, and take me out of the great waters from the hand of strangers, whose mouth talketh of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of wickedness. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, and sing praises unto thee upon a ten-stringed lute. Thou hast given victory unto, unto kings, and hast delivered David thy servant from the peril of the sword. Save me, and deliver me from the hand of strangers, whose mouth talketh of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of iniquity. That our sons may grow up as the young plants, and that our daughters may be as the polished corners of the temple, that our garners may be full and plenteous with all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no decay, no leading into captivity, and no complaining in our streets. Happy are the people that are in such a case, yet blessed are the people who have the Lord for their God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 145 is a psalm of praise, proclaiming God's wonderful works, and as such, it's uh, been assigned very appropriately to Pentecost. We think of the church as being uh, filled with the Spirit, uh, that it may uh, speak in tongues the wonderful works of God, works of creation and redemption. I will magnify thee, O God, my King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and praise thy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and marvelous worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works, so that men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness." The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. Then he turns to speak of God's character. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, that thy power, thy glory, and mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. And then again, uh, the Lord's uh, works. The Lord upholdeth all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh to all them that call upon him, yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh give thanks unto his holy name for ever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And Psalm 146, an exhortation to put our whole trust and hope in God alone, and not in, uh, in the Creator, and not in the creature. Praise the Lord of my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. O oh, put not your trust in princes, nor in any child of man, 
for there is no help in them. For when the breath of man goeth forth, he shall turn again to his earth, and then all his thoughts perish. Blessed is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, and whose hope is in the Lord of God, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, who keepeth his promise for ever, who helpeth them to right that suffer wrong, who feedeth the hungry. The Lord looseth men out of prison, the Lord giveth sight to the blind, the Lord helpeth them that are fallen, the Lord careth for the righteous, the Lord careth for the strangers, he defendeth the fatherless and widow, as for the way of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God, O Zion, shall be king for evermore, and throughout all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 62nd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Once again, as in chapter 60 that we read yesterday, it talks about the amazing and wonderful transformation of Judah and Jerusalem, a figure, of course, of the church. And here, um, one aspect of this is, is the uh, pagan nations, which once regarded Judah uh, with contempt and derision, uh, uh, that they're, they're, uh, there's a great reversal has taken place in Judah's exaltation and in the nation's attitude to it um, as a result of God's um, uh, passing from wrath to favor. And indeed, we hear God's voice. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt, not, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, my delight is in her, and thy name, land Beulah, which means married. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest, till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand, and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh, behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, 
thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 35th verse of the 12th chapter of the Gospel, according to St. Luke. And we continue with Jesus' teaching of his disciples. And here he moves into the theme of watchfulness, vigilance, staying awake and alert, um, looking for the alert to the signs of the coming of God's kingdom. Uh, and this alertness, uh, this uh, expectation, uh, attentiveness to the coming of the kingdom is indeed the work of prayer. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so. Blessed are those servants. This, this is uh, uh, hours of, 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 of in the middle of the night. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, Speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if, that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared on himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him will they ask the more. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
what we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts and confess with our lip and 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 uh, confess with our lips as we recite the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves, each other, and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, for its unity in the truth of the gospel, in brotherly love and charity, for its mission and ministry in every place. I bid your prayers for uh, this country of ours and all countries for their peace, order, and good government, from the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. Uh, and a sorry catalog of, of names must be included here. The peoples of North Korea, of China, Hong Kong, Tibet, Shenzhen, Afghanistan, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, Ethiopia, Belarus, the peoples of Ukraine expecting a Russian invasion in the new year, uh, for the peoples of Haiti, uh, Venezuela, uh, Myanmar, uh, Nicaragua, and uh, the countries of West Africa dealing with jihadi uh, raiding and kidnapping. I bid your prayers for uh, the uh, clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, especially those under persecution, the Christians of India in particular, now targeted by uh, Hindu nationalists and chauvinists um, and uh, not protected by the civil authorities. Um, for those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, today especially those who grieve. Think today especially of the Lattimore family. We bid your prayers for those who are hungry and homeless, for the orphaned, the abandoned, the abused, for those who are suffering with depression and mental illness, and the challenge of sobriety, those dealing with cancer and its treatments, those undergoing surgery or recovering from it, those suffering from debilitating infirmity, um, chronic pain, uh, um, cognitive impairment, For those who minister to the sick, if mind and body, healing arts and sciences, for caregivers, for women expecting children and for their children, for the newborns and their mothers, for those who are dying. We remember before God those who departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day that being we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, being sanctified by his Holy Spirit, transformed into the likeness of his Son, that we may be fit to receive him when indeed he comes. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who hast given us thy only begotten Son, to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate, and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of dark and the light shineth in darkness. Sorry. And the life was the light of men, and the life shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen.